first of all, I want to let you know, I deeply admire Sadhguru. He's a very deep man and he has deep understanding about many of the things that many people get confused. Right? And recently, I had the opportunity to review and go through his book called uh, Karma, A Yogi's Guide to Crafting Your Destiny. Right? So it's a fascinating work of art and I, everyone should read that book. I recommend that everybody should read that book because the way he described karma is a very unique way of looking at karma. And that would give you, no matter where you are in your level of consciousness, that will give you so much clarity about this, this vocabulary and how this level of conditioning is affecting us as humans. That being said, I want to point out three things. And you guys could read the book. And like I said, I cannot endorse this book more because it's that profound. And he went a lot deep in explaining many of the philosophies, many of the concepts that are mostly not familiar to much of human existence, right? So fascinating work. I would love, love for you to go and check it out and study that and follow, follow um, Sadhguru. He has a lot of profound things to offer. That being said, I want to discuss three mistakes that he has in the books, in the book called Karma. Uh, yogi's guide to crafting your destiny first mistake is that he opens the book by saying karma is not a generational curse it is an action it is every action has its own reaction every action will be bringing in its own reaction that's what he's saying but the underlying idea of curse and curse story is continued throughout the book i'll explain that in a second so in the beginning he's saying that karma is not karma as the way we understand it Karma is something superior to it. Each man is here, each man and woman is here to experience and do their karma so that, so that they are free from their conditioning. But later on, he's saying that, you know what, uh, you are accumulating karma. When you are, for example, when you are meditative and when you start thinking negative, you are accumulating more karma. And that I think is a complete mistake. And with all sincerity, I'll explain what I, why I say that. First of all, there is a conflict. He's saying, Karma is nothing but, a, but an action cycle. In, in Sanskrit, karma means action, right? So it is an action cycle, not a curse from generation to generation. At the same time, the entire book goes on the line that karma is the curse. That, that doesn't logically make sense. If once you read the book, you will get that. By the way, it is an amazing book. Like I said, so much deep at the same time some fundamental assumption issues. Second thing is, he's saying, that, uh, he's saying that memory and imagination is the biggest mistake, biggest problem for humanity. It is true, partially, but it's absolutely not true at the same time. Let me explain why. Memory, yes, memory is the biggest challenge. Memory of our ancestors. And whether you believe in 10,000 years of human evolution or a billion years, billion years of species evolution, or however way you think that humans and this animal and all this life evolved, memory is the thing that we that use, I mean, memory is the thing that we used to collect the data from the past, leaving up to this point. Right? And it has its own conditioning. It is true that it is a challenge, but the greatest wisdom is in that memory too. And the way Sadhguru is writing this book. The knowledge that he's deriving from the universe, the wisdom he's capturing from the world, from the universe, it's from the memory of the collective. So please don't say that the entire memory is the mistake of humanity. No, memory has an issue, but memory is not the issue. It's not just the issue. Memory has beauty and darkness at the same time. So in other words, the conditioning of the past should not be judged. So if there is conditioning from the past, if there is conditioning from the past, let's embrace that conditioning and take what we want to embrace. And another statement he's saying, imagination is your enemy too. Because according to him, memory is the past and imagination is the future. If these two are enemies, there is no humanity. There is no life for us. Why? Because it is from the memory that we learned our mistakes and we corrected them and we perfected that. And we have that collective memory in ourselves so that we don't need to go through the illnesses that we went through probably three million years ago or like half a billion years ago. So we, we evolved and built immunity. Immunity is a memory. Immunity is a memory. Your body figuring out, I don't need to deal with this bacteria anymore. So the memory is the very thing that is 
redempting us and enslaving us. I understand the enslaving part, but what he's missing is, it is it's, it's giving us redemption at the same time. Does that make sense to you? And imagination, the rats were living in holes, in burrows, probably a million years ago. Where do they live now? They live in the same burrow. It might be slightly different, but essentially it's the same burrows. Birds were living in trees millions of years ago or 10,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, depending on what you believe. But they still live in the trees. Why? Because they lack imagination. So imagination, Einstein said, is more important than knowledge. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Okay? Imagination is more important than knowledge. So what does that mean? It means that you and I, the human species, figure out a way to get out of our holes, our caves, and our tree houses, to build houses, to build flats, to build 100-story buildings, and use technology and innovation to leap us forward. What did we use for that? Imagination for the future. So the way we are able to write books, somebody imagine that. The way we are able to share information on a video, somebody imagine that. So the fact that memory is conditioning us, we shouldn't fight memory. We shouldn't disguise memory. We shouldn't, um, we shouldn't be mad at memory because it exists. It is because of memory that we exist. It is because of memory that we have immunity. It's because of memory that we are sane. We don't need to think about so many things that our ancestors thought about. Makes sense? Same thing with future imagination. If, if Sadhguru is saying imagination is stopping humanity, no, that's absolutely wrong. Yes, imagination in the wrong context is a problem. Imagination, imagining the lion from the past in the future is a problem. That is the cause of our stress and anxiety. So because we are imagining the boss on Sunday evening, we are like, oh my gosh, so tired. You're thinking about the boss and you feel the stress. Why? Because we are imagining the lion from our past, that the line that we don't want to deal with, that is imagination working against us. So the problem as such is not that imagination is a problem. The problem is that we are using imagination, we're using memory in a way that it's not serving us. Do you understand what I mean? So that is a piece that is missing. Maybe he didn't mean it that way, but that's how it is written. So that's why I have to tell you this, right? So. That's the second thing that I noticed. The third thing is he talks about accumulated, accumulated karma and allotted karma. F fancy words, I like it. It's a good idea. I don't know, maybe it came, maybe it's his own vocabulary. Uh, it, maybe he came up with the idea, but essentially we don't want to use this word, you know, accumulated karma and allotted karma to describe the situation. Think about it in a much simpler way. The simpler way is we, accumulated conditioning from other people. We accumulated conditioning from other people, from our parents, from our grandparents, from, from our ancestors, whether they are monkeys or Adam and Eve, whatever they, you call them, we accumulated these memories. And these memories created conditioning in us. And using this memory, we are using the imagination to leap us forward in stress or in ecstasy. But either way, Either way, this accumulated karma and allotted karma basically simply means, like rather than confusing it with a, with a really complicated system, it simply means we're conditioned from our past and we are conditioned from our, from our current situation. I would add one more place, which is, which is piece probably he missed too, which is one, there is a conditioning of a billionaires of human experience, the species evolution, not human, species evolution. There is a condition for the last 10,000 years of sociological evolution, which I call as a psychological evolution from the Christ, the Buddha, the Krishna, uh, the Nabi, the, 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 the greatest thinkers of all time, the Alexander, the, uh, the, the Plato, the Socrates, St. Augustine, the St. Thomas Aquinas. So there is a conditioning for the last 10,000 years of human psychological evolution. And then there is this human evolution of me living in this planet as a human, the psychological evolution, the physical evolution of me. So there is a biological evolution, there is a psychological evolution, and there is an evolution of me, as in you, evolving as a human. 
So he calls it accumulated karma and allotted karma. Let's very basically simplify this and say, this is what, this is evolution. And the conditioning of the entire spiritual community, these gurus and teachers, everything, is that we need to somehow reject this notion of memory. Oh my gosh, we should eliminate memory from our vocabulary. That is not the idea. You know, let's not have memory in it. Let's, let's, let's fight this mind. Let's just fight this mind that has created this conditioning in us. You know why that mind exists? My friends who are conscious and who are thinking and who are trying to figure out this thing. The reason why that mind exists is because we are fighting it. Can you let go of that mind? Because the moment you are able to look at memory and start appreciating it, the memory is going to disappear. The moment you are able to look at imagination and start appreciating it, the imagination that is not helping you is going to disappear. So my invitation for the teachers and spiritual leaders and teachers of the world is, look at your past, look at your conditioning. And rather, rather than fighting this conditioning and say, oh my gosh, this is causing the problem. And look at your future. You are imagining the bad future and look at that and say, oh my gosh, I'm creating this bad future. Let's embrace it. Let's take the memory from the past. Let's take the imagination from the future and bring it together. And the moment you are able to embrace the memory, and the imagination, you're free. That's what I'm talking about. That is what he missed too. So I just want to share that with you. I know a bunch of people are going to be mad at me because it's their guru. And then I am, I'm talking about him like that. But think about it. Think about it. What is really happening? Does that make sense to you? If I make sense about this topic, if, 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 I'm, if I'm making sense to you, forget about who I am and how much, how famous I am and stuff like that. But think about it. Like, does it make sense to you? Does it make sense to you in your heart? If it makes sense to you, use it. If it doesn't make sense to you, ignore it. Or just write some bad comments about it. But whatever you want to do, think about it. Be free from your memory. Be from, free from your imagination. And when you do, you are free. That's what I wanted to share. So fascinating book by uh, Sadhguru. He did an amazing job. Lot of insights. Lot of insights. And I'll be doing another video about what he did right while he wrote this book called Karma, A Yogi's Guide to Crafting Your Destiny. Fascinating work, fascinating idea. Thank you, Sadhguru, for doing an amazing job. But if you're listening to this, just check, check out those three things that I talked about. Thank you so much, guys. Have an amazing day. Rubal Chandi, signing off.